So about seven months ago, I upgraded my monitor to the 4K LG C1 OLED TV. And it is a TV, not a monitor. And I did a review after about a month, and now seven months later, well, six months after that review, but I've had this for seven months now, any regrets? It's a 48-inch TV as a monitor. It's not even a monitor, it's a TV, and it's OLED. A lot of people worried about the burn-in and all of that. So, have I changed any of my opinions? Well, let's start out with this. This is the best monitor I have ever used, despite the fact that it's a TV. And not only that, I would say that this is the best gaming-related device of any kind that I have ever purchased. This has done more to upgrade my gaming experience than just about anything else. So when you're thinking about a monitor choice, I think a lot of people don't think hard enough on that decision, and they're also not willing to put as much budget there as maybe they should, because this is the detail a lot of people miss. If you buy a new graphics card to max out all of the graphics settings in a game, and push a high frame rate, and all of that. The graphics card does not send an image to your eyes. Your monitor does. So in the end, there's a middleman between your graphics card and your eyes. It's your monitor. And so if your monitor is not capable of reproducing excellent colors, high contrast ratio, low motion blur, no ghosting, all of that, then all of that work and money, you know, <laughs> that's invested in that GPU really isn't getting maxed out. Let me tell you about my new build. It's gonna be awesome. RTX 3090 Ti, top of the line, best ever, 12900 KS. We are overclocking this thing. It goes to 5.5 gigahertz and I'm gonna push it farther on my DDR5 RAM. This thing's gonna be so fast. How can I afford it? Easy, man. Save money on peripherals. I'm just gonna use my old ones. It's fine. Fine. Now your GPU and your monitor choice do have to go hand in hand, but also in general, I think most people will keep a monitor through a couple of GPU upgrades. So, you know, thinking about which one's going to stick with you longer, I mean that could depend on the person, but at least for me that's how it's usually been. So in the end, what are you getting with the OLED screen that is so much better, like I said, than anything else I'd tried. Well, what I'd upgraded to before uh, this was a really nice 34 inch ultra wide, and this was a 3440 by 1440p ultra wide monitor, and it's IPS, also from LG, and it was a very high end model. It's a couple years old now, so it wouldn't command the $1,300 price tag that it initially did, but at their initial uh, listing prices, well, not necessarily the listing prices, but I, I purchased both of these at about the same price, although the C1 was obviously newer and that one would have degraded. But what I'm getting at was, that, that's a pretty high-end ultra-wide monitor. And I've gotta say, guys, I still have them both sitting here. Do I ever touch the ultra-wide? Yes, but only to do work. I do not game on that unless I absolutely have to, like I'm making an ultra-wide video, but honestly then I'd, I'd rather probably just do a custom resolution on this OLED screen. Why is that? Well, the biggest thing is the contrast ratio. Now, basically what OLED does is you can turn off the pixels that aren't in use. Each pixel emits its own light, whereas other screen technology has a backlight. Now there's full array local dimming where you have small backlights so you can turn off most of the backlights but you'll still get a little bit of a halo around a small bright object. And OLED does not have that problem. Each pixel emits its own light so the ones that aren't being used can just be turned off. And OLED is also just a completely different technology that allows for incredibly low motion blur. Meaning that when you're actually playing a game, two screens with the same refresh rate don't necessarily actually still look the same in motion. Because there have been screens, for example, actually before I got this ultra wide I have over, over there, I actually initially bought a different one 
which was uh, VA technology, which has better blacks than the IPS I ended up with, right? It had a deeper contrast ratio. But it had a lot of ghosting to the image in motion, despite having a fairly high refresh rate. Uh, meaning that the, you know, the screen could technically refresh, but there would be a kind of a smeared ghost of the image, especially in the dark grays on that particular monitor. This OLED just absolutely blows away anything else I've ever seen in terms of motion clarity, and also in terms of input latency. Now, I don't have all of the fancy input latency monitoring tech that some bigger channels have, but I do have myself playing games and the actual experience of that. And I've got to say, it just feels perfectly sharp. Whereas if I played on like my actual 4K TV that I have over there, <laughs> um, it's just absolutely night and day different. So if you're like, TVs have, have input latency, not these C1 OLEDs, at least not when you're running in the gaming optimized mode, which it definitely has. So overall, what I get is the infinite contrast ratio with the black pixels actually being turned off with incredibly fast response times and incredibly low motion blur and it has excellent HDR and sure there are other screens with with a brighter peak brightness but your eye doesn't really perceive peak brightness it perceives a contrast from dark to light so basically, because these pixels that are that are black can actually be off, then the brights that you do get, it's perceived as an incredibly good HDR experience. Now, most of you who have experienced HDR in PC gaming probably were underwhelmed by it. And I was when I was on my ultrawide. The IPS ultrawide does what a lot of a lot of you know mid-budget gaming monitors do, which is it claims HDR support, and it can accept an HDR signal. But it doesn't really have the full array local dimming, and even ones that do have full array local dimming aren't necessarily going to be able to, like I said, turn off the actual pixels around it, so you get these little, light, like, the ghosted lights like I was talking about. Let me just say this. I never ever touched the HDR on my IPS ultrawide, but on my OLED, I can immediately tell if I'm playing a game with the HDR on or off. Occasionally I've turned HDR off for filming videos for the channel because most of you don't have an HDR monitor so I don't wanna capture an HDR. But like, I don't mention this in my videos, guys. The experience of playing the, uh, most games that have decent HDR with HDR off when you've been used to playing it with HDR on, it just, it's like heartbreaking to me when I watch the image go from this just glorious bright crisp whites and dark blacks and uh, saturated colors and it just looks fantastic. And then it just kind of looks dim and washed out in comparison. Now, don't get me wrong, the dim and washed out in comparison non-HDR content on here still looks better than it does on my other uh, panel, but it's just so much better on here, <laughs> okay? Uh, and then with, with the HDR on. So if you want my thoughts on HDR content, uh, especially on PC gaming, is it worth it? It's absolutely worth it, but you have to have a monitor capable of that HDR. Now, the C1 is aging a bit. It's still currently, the uh, as of the time of filming this video, the one you'd buy if you were buying an LG's, uh, you know, 4K OLED screen, This it's still the C1, but coming this year in 2022, we should see the C2 lineup which also might address one of the biggest question marks people have about the C1 as a PC monitor. This thing is huge. It is 48 inches. Like, I'm a lot closer to the camera than this is. If, if you actually see me back here, like, like this, is, this is a big screen. But let's address the size, okay? So 48 inches. Now, it's absolutely massive if I'm sitting the way I would against my other monitor, like right up on the desk here. This is just silly, I don't like this experience. However, you know, chairs can tilt back. So I'm generally kind of slouched back here a bit, 
And if, like, I'm more than arm's length from my eyes to the TV. So yeah, the 48 inch screen, you, for, for that to work, you definitely need a deep desk and maybe even the ability to come further behind or the ability to wall mount it behind your desk on a wall. If you're not gonna be at least three feet away, I think that's really the comfortable limit, although some people might have different tolerances. Some people might wanna be closer, some people might wanna be further away. Now, a lot of the gaming I do is also games that I might play on a controller, in which case I actually sit even further back, just a bit, kind of slouch back further, kick up my feet a little bit, that kind of thing, uh, in which case it's definitely not too big at all. And honestly, um, I've tried just to compare it like letterboxing down to a 32 inch 1440p screen, which by the way, this has the exact same pixel density uh, as a 32 inch uh, 1440p screen, or you could letterbox down to a 24 inch 1080p screen. So in terms of pixel density, it matches those. Although you would sit further away, making it appear crisper than you would maybe with how close you would sit to those types of screens. I actually really enjoy the screen size, but what I was saying with the LG C2 lineup is we are expecting to see a 42 inch model, which would come down a bit on the diagonal size, might be a little bit more manageable on more desk spaces. And for a lot of people that probably would be the way to go, but to be honest, my current thought is I actually don't wanna go with a smaller screen. I really enjoy the large size here, although I think the 42 inch would be perfectly fine as well. I'm not sure I'd wanna go much smaller than that. I really enjoy the increased screen real estate, and I think the pixel density is just right if you can get the distances I talked about. Now, another interesting option coming out this year is the quantum dot OLED technology coming from Samsung. And I think you can already start ordering, like I think there's a Dell Alienware 3440 by 1440p ultra wide, uh, which uh, does feature that quantum dot technology. I think that was featured recently in a uh, Linus Tech Tips video, and I haven't experienced it myself, but it definitely sounds really nice. And I'm honestly considering getting one to replace my other ultra wide I have over here. So I can get more of an idea of, do I prefer 4K? Or is it just because I have the OLED? Uh, because honestly, I'm not quite sure what my opinion would be. I'm leaning towards, I prefer 4K, although the expense you need on GPUs, you're gonna be like an upgrade to a, you know, at least 80 or 800 tier, you know, <laughs> GPU every single cycle if you wanna be doing 4K gaming. Whereas the 3440 by 1440, I think you could get away with either a cheaper GPU or keeping it for a couple of generations. Either way, you're going pretty high end, but the 4K, the GPU resources you need for that is pretty insane. <laughs> Although I really think it's worth it. So I'm considering uh, getting that OLED ultra wide to compare and maybe there'll be future videos on that if I do. My problem right now is honestly that I want a black color scheme and it comes with white on the back of it, but maybe that's not the end of the world. That's probably a silly thing to be picky about. But what's different about the quantum dot OLED? Well, basically this emits the different colors of light directly out of pixels and it could burn in more and it also can't get quite to the same peak brightnesses. The quantum dot OLED and watch LTT's video on it if you want more info. Most of what I know about it is honestly from watching that. Uh, the quantum dot OLED uses blue light and then filters it. And the idea there is that you can uh, like filters it into the colors that you want. You get a bit better uh, colors a representation, you can get a bit more color accuracy, you can get a bit brighter. In general, it does seem to be a bit of an improvement, and since you're not having to drive the pixels quite so hard to do that, there might be less burn-in on that technology, although this is the first generation of that and we haven't actually proved it. And so let's talk about burn-in. We don't talk about burn-in. Uh, I feel like we could do a song parody about that, but then I'd get sued by Disney. No, let's talk about burn-in. So I have had absolutely no burn-in issues, but I am a little bit more careful than I am with other monitors. Now, what's burn-in if, like, like, the short version of that is, uh, because each individual pixel is emitting its own light, it, the OLED pixels can actually get tired. That's basically what burn-in is. It's, it technically would, would be more of a burn-out than it is a burn-in. The pixels get tired and can stop being able to produce the same colors and brightnesses that they were before, and you could leave a, if you display like one sheet of color on the screen, 
You could leave a bit of a ghosted image of like a HUD element in a game. Uh, Ratings.com has done a lot of extensive testing on this, and there certainly can be burn-in on OLEDs, but I have seen no issues with it on mine. And speaking of LTT videos, he did a video uh, about his C, it was either a C1 or I think it might've been a C10 OLED uh, that did get some burn-in for him. And, but he was doing a four corner window, bright like productivity setup um, for, you know, I'm assuming his whole like what, eight hour work day, all day, all the time. And that's a silly use case for this. Let's be clear. If you're buying this, it should be for a entertainment setup. It should be for a mixture of gaming, possibly some video content with the occasional work or general web browsing. I do produce some of my videos on it, especially if I'm editing 4K video, I like having the 4K screen. I like the increased uh, screen real estate. But if I'm letting a video upload to YouTube and it's just gonna be sitting there static for hours, I turn this screen off and I turn my uh, ultra wide back on to not tire out my OLED screen uh, just on some static images all day long. That's a silly use case for it. Also, I have a screensaver enabled. You can see it running right now. This is honestly just Mystify, it's built into Windows. Uh, when I featured this before, I get comments like, what is that screensaver? It's amazing. Um, it's just Mystify built into Windows. Like, like literally, that's what I have right here. This is the uh, Windows screensaver thing, Mystify, and I just click preview, okay? <laughs> and I have it set to like 15 minutes or something like that. So that'll kick on. Also notice that when I do get out of my screensaver, this is a black desktop background. And honestly, a black desktop background with the taskbar hidden, which is another thing that you can do. If I mouse down, my taskbar pops up. But then when I move off of it, it goes away. So with the taskbar hidden and a black desktop background and having a screensaver set to pop on when it's not in use and then primarily using it for a variety of games and entertainment, I have absolutely no concern about pixel burn-in. However, you can also buy monitors with warranties and you can specifically check whether or not they cover pixel burn-in on an OLED. Now you do wanna be very careful because not every warranty will, but there definitely are places you can buy monitors with specifically OLED pixel burn-in warranties. And so if this is a major concern for you, I'd encourage you to buy it through that place and maybe that, while I generally don't like buying an extended warranty, uh, this could be a case where that makes sense. If you're spending over a thousand dollars on a monitor, you don't want it to, you know, burn out and die after a year or two, or I mean, it wouldn't die, but you'd have the ghosted images, all of that. So to be honest, I am not concerned about pixel burn-in on mine, and you can get a warranty if you are. I really think that as long as you're not being stupid about running like a four corner bright productivity windows eight hours a day for months, uh, then I think you should be just fine. Overall, I really think OLED is amazing. I would like to compare it with micro LED, micro LED at some point, which I have not experienced in person. But for now, Overall, I have absolutely zero regrets buying this. I don't even regret the 48 inch size and I absolutely do not regret the OLED technology. This is amazing. It's just absolutely upgraded my whole gaming experience. And to be honest, even my productivity, I prefer to do here, like I said, if it's not gonna be hours and hours and hours of a static image in the same location. So yeah, if I was buying right now, would I buy it again? Well, if I was buying right now, yeah, if, if I literally had to buy right now, yes, I, I would actually buy this exact same screen again if I could choose from any, any monitor that's in stock and available right now, this is the one I would buy. If I was buying at some time this year, I would probably wait for the C2 generation or see what comes out with the Quantum Dot OLED tech once that's available. And if you don't wanna be running a 4K screen because of the GPU horsepower required, consider that ultra wide um, with the Quantum Dot technology uh, from Alienware possibly. Now overall, I'm super happy with this. I would buy it again and I just heard my doorbell ring, which means I think uh, my mom's coming to visit and this is a hobby I do in my basement, so I better go. And if you guys have more questions, maybe I can address in a future video or the comment section. Thank you to all my channel members who hit the join button and all that. And I gotta go, hope everybody has an excellent day.